My name is Tanya Murphy, and I work for the Office for Citizens with Developmental Disabilities, OCDD, in Baton Rouge. Been working with OCDD for about 24 years, and um, Act 421 has been around for a couple of years now. So let's give you a little bit of information about Act 421. Uh, the Act 421 Children's Medicaid Option, TEFRA. It's a, it's a program through Louisiana Department of Health that allows certain children with disabilities to get Medicaid coverage, even if their parents earn too much money to qualify for regular Medicaid. Um, it's modeled after the Federal Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act, which is where they get the acronym TEFRA. Ever since uh, we implemented this program, we've had several instances of families who were never able to get Medicaid coverage for their children with disabilities. They had extraordinary costs in medical expenses, unable to get certain uh, therapies for their kids because they couldn't afford it or their private insurance wouldn't pay for it. We've had so many wonderful stories and feedback from families who can now qualify for Medicaid coverage and their children are now getting the care that they need, the therapy that they need, and the parents are able to not get so far behind in medical bills. So it's a wonderful program. We're super excited in Louisiana to have this for everybody. So what are the eligibility requirements? Act 421 is just a way to get Medicaid. And so you would just um, apply for Medicaid and, and after, we're gonna go into more detail later on in this uh, presentation, but after uh, you've been determined, your child's been determined to uh, be ineligible for other Medicaid programs, applicants that are under the age of 19 who have disabilities and meet a specific institutional level of care they'll be considered for the Act 421 TEFRA program. They also have to, um, to not have total assets that exceed $2,000 in value. And they exclude the parent's assets, so it's just in the child's name. The disabilities that are looked at are uh, the ones recognized by the Social Security Administration. Regardless of whether the child is eligible to re receive benefits under the program, like if your kid, if the child does not get SSI, um, or doesn't qualify for SSI, you still have to meet the, um, the Social Security Administration definition of what a disability is. Um, the child must be a Louisiana resident, uh, must be a United States citizen or a qualified non-citizen, must have or have applied for a Social Security number, and the care of the child uh, needs to be provided safely in the home for less than the cost of an institutional care. There's four general steps to enrolling in the Act 421 TEFRA program. First, the Medicaid application that's online, or I think they still have paper applications you can fill out and send in. Level of care assessment by your local governing entity, which also is called your Human Service Districts Authority. For example, Capital Area Human Services District, um, Florida Parishes, uh, there's 10 in the state of Louisiana local governing entities. And so we'll use the, the term LGE quite a bit. Third is disability determination, which is the acronym is MEDT. And that's where they determine if the child meets the social security um, administration definition of disability. And then enrollment in the service coverage through a health, a healthy Louisiana plan. All right, how to apply. First, you have to complete the Medicaid application online, by mail, in person, or by phone. Website to fill out the Medicaid application is uh, www.healthy.la.gov. You can call the toll-free number 1-888-342-6207. You can complete a paper application and mail it to Baton Rouge, the post office box 91283. 
or you can apply in person at the nearest certified Medicaid application center or Medicaid regional office close to you. So once you fill out that Medicaid application and it's been submitted, even if you're thinking, I'm only applying for Act 421 for my child, they still go through the process of looking at the application and determining, are there any other Medicaid programs that your child might be eligible for? And so they're considered for all the other Medicaid programs before they are pending for Act 421. So it takes a little bit of time for the, uh, the system to work its way through. After ineligibility for other Medicaid programs is established, applicants under age 19 who have marked yes on the Medicaid application to the question asking if there's anybody in the home that has a disability. So you have to remember when you're filling out that application to mark yes for that question, then the application is, uh, the application triggers the system to pend the child for Act 421, TEFRA. Once the person, once the child's application is pending for TEFRA, then um, their name comes to our group of, of staff. We've got several that work with OCDD and that work with Medicaid that solely work with the TEFRA program. And once we see that name, then we, um, our staff look up the child and, and to determine if um, the child is already, already has a statement of approval has already been determined eligible by that LGE for other DD programs, or if the child is already enrolled with the Early Steps program. And it, once they determine if the child has the statement of approval or SOA or Early Steps eligibility, it, it just depends the next step in the in the process. So OCD looks that up, and then depending on whether or not they're eligible whether or not they have early steps eligibility or an SOA already, that just makes a difference as to which packet gets mailed out to the family. So Medicaid then mails out what's called the level of care packet to applicants. And the exact information in that packet is, is changed depending on if the child has a statement of approval already or is early steps eligible, or if they don't have either of those, then they send a different packet. So just that's the only difference um, but the family gets the um, the level of care packet mailed to them and that it has documents in it that need to be completed and returned. If the documents are not complete when they're received back to Medicaid, then staff will reach out to get whatever uh, information is missing. Okay, once we get those completed level of care packets back from the families filled out, then um, Medicaid notifies the LGEs that there is a completed packet. And then the LGE staff reviews the documentation that's been sent over their way from Medicaid. And LGE staff then contact the applicant, the parent, within 14 days to inform them that they are aware of the child's application and they might schedule an appointment at that point. Um, but the LGE staff kind of take over at that point, dealing with uh, working with the family to complete this Act 421 TEFRA application. All right, there's three different ways uh, that the local governing entity, the LGE, complete the uh, level of care determination. So the three different level of care pathways are intermediate care facility or ICF, hospital level of care or nursing facility level of care. Intermediate care facility level of care is for individuals with intellectual disabilities. Um, to qualify, an applicant has to have a statement of approval from the local governing entity, the LGE, which represents OCDD. The LGEs represent OCDD with uh, issuing those statements of approval or the applicant has to be eligible for the Early Steps program, which is for um, infants and toddlers zero to three years of age. Um, and then the applicant's physician also has to fill out a 90L form that um, just kind of attests that the applicant meets the ICF level of care. So once you have an SOA and a 90L, then that's all you need to meet the ICF level of care from the LGEs. 
the other two level of care um, pathways to get Act 421 is um, hospital and nursing, and nursing facility. Um, the hospital level of care, in order to qualify under hospital level of care, a registered nurse in accordance with the LDH's assessment protocol has to assess the applicant, the child. Each LGE uses a nurse to perform these assessments. Um, they do a record review and then they interview relevant people, the um, caregivers, um, whoever knows the child the best. And the assessment has to show frequent medical care that requires the use of equipment to prevent life-threatening situations with skilled medical care required more than once during each 24-hour period, skilled medical interventions that are expected to last at least six months, and a health condition that is unstable, presenting constant potential for complications or rapid rapid deterioration such that the child requires monitoring in order to detect unstable or life-threatening conditions and respond with appropriate care. And the third and final pathway is the nursing facility level of care. In order to qualify under nursing facility level of care, a registered nurse in accordance with LDH's assessment protocol assesses the applicant. Each LGE uses a nurse to perform these assessments, just like for hospital level of care. They do a record review and they interview relevant people that know uh, detailed information about the child. For the nursing facility level of care, the assessment has to show that the child has a diagnosis of a medical physical condition resulting in needs requiring long-term care services of at least six months and the child requires skilled nursing interventions and or has substantial functional limitations requiring hands-on assistance from others throughout their day. So the LGE notifies Medicaid of the child's level of care determination once they complete either the ICF, hospital or nursing facility level of care determinations. And then the LGE sends the, the approval or denial letter to the family and the process moves on to the next step. If the applicant does not meet one of the level of care pathways, then the process stops and the applicant is not eligible for Act 421 Children's Medicaid Option, TEFRA. The LGE issues a denial letter to the family at that point. Level of care approval, if, if the child is approved through one of the three pathways, then that level of care approval is forwarded to Medicaid's eligibility determination team, who then reviews the child's record for a final de decision for coverage. If approved, then the applicant receives TEFRA gets Medicaid. If not, then TEFRA coverage is denied. So regardless of whether the child meets ICF, nursing facility, or hospital pathway, level of care pathway, the, the end result is Medicaid coverage that is the same. Either way, you just get a Medicaid card and it covers the same things. So it doesn't matter which pathway you go down to get approval. It's the same result at the end. Okay, if the level of care is approved, a disability determination would be made by the Medicaid Eligibility Determination Team. That's the MEDT. Unless the, the applicant already has a disability determ determination from Social Security. A lot of kids already do. Um, if they don't, they have to go through the MEDT. This is where a lot of families get frustrated, and I don't blame you. <laughs> because you, you apply, you submit the application, it goes to the LGE, they do the level of care pathway, you get this letter that says, hey, we're eligible, yay, we meet the level of care. Nope, there's one whole other step where the kid has to go through the MEDT process to then be determined if they meet the Social Security Administration definition of a disability. Applicants who meet the financial and categorical eligibility requirements will then be enrolled in the Act 421 uh, TEFRA program. Um, for any questions that you might have about enrollment, you can call Medicaid at 1-800-230-0690, where Medicaid eligibility staff are available to, to assist you. So there's many decisions throughout this process that you can appeal. 
if you're not satisfied with the decision. So um, determinations that an applicant does not meet level of care standards, like you don't meet the level of care, you can appeal that if, you, if you're denied. Um, denial of the Medicaid eligibility, which is the MBDT process. If you um, are denied, you can appeal that. There's also prior authorization for services that if you get denied, you can appeal. Um, the method of appealing will depend on what decision was made and who made it. So you just have to look at the letter that you get in the mail um, that is notifying you that you're being denied. Um, and it'll be inst there's instructions on that letter that tell you how to appeal the decision. So that's all I have for um, for my uh, information to provide to you. Um, it's a lot of information to absorb. There's a lot of steps in the process, um, but you can um, you can get help all along the way. Your local governing entity is knows how to do this whole thing, and if you call them, they can help walk you through it. Um, so basically, you just go online to your Medicaid. You fill out your Medicaid application. Um, you have your level of care processed by the LGE. And then you go through the MEDT process by Medicaid. And then if you go through all those steps and you are determined eligible, then your child will get Medicaid.